Good evening and namaste, beloved mighty companions. Thank you for this holy joining in truth to see what's true. And it feels helpful just to mention, talk a little bit about light circles and for anyone who might confine their way to us online, since it is a bit different from other methods of looking at denials of divinity. Yet it's really all the same. It's the same in that it's the willingness that's the change, the willingness to see it differently in the light of truth. And it doesn't, the form can be helpful, but it's truly irrelevant to the willingness. If there is a desire below the level of awareness to avoid the truth or not see the truth, then as Jesus said, he cannot intervene between us and our thoughts. He can only show us where the beliefs are that deny the truth. He is providing a beautiful reminder that as infinite light beings, this is not something that happens because we wake up. It's really who we are first, infinite light. And as much as through thought or denials, we want to try and cover that up by creation of the world, it's still available to us at all times consistently. And so coming to this light is really the power, infinite power we have as infinite beings to focus on light. It's the thought of the Father has for us. It's the light that lights everyone who's born. It's the light of the Holy Spirit. It's the fire of the Holy Spirit that fires in every being. That's the same for all beings. That's how we're one. So we come together to celebrate that and also honor the infinite power we have to see that we are light beings and that anything placed in the light, any thought or belief placed in the light cannot stand in the presence of the light. The two cannot coexist. So as we stand in truth together, this is a silent meditation with Jesus, focusing on the light, holding Jesus's hand, and our brother is representing the light that we are sitting here in this light circle, focusing on the light that's shared and placing each of these thoughts that arise in the light. And just continue, objection arises, place it in the light. All the thoughts, feelings, and emotions just continually say, okay, Jesus, I'm having this emotion, I'm having this thought, I place it in the light. I'm willing to hear you. It's just the mind training to let the thoughts, drop the thoughts, listen to Jesus. And hear him in our, in our heart as we just ask for his assistance. And to really hear him, this is mind training, to really listen deeply to the silence and to see that whatever's appearing in consciousness, this is so much power in seeing this, what he's doing in this new covenant. In the Course of Miracles, it's not really different. It's just he's going really direct. In the lessons, he was saying, you know, try to see if you can today. Now it's like he's going, know that you can see it today because you're infinite being. You have full power unless you deny yourself through the desire to experience other, to experience something other than peace. <clears throat> so what's been coming in today I've just been typing in I, like maybe a chapter I'm not really sure but felt in guidance just to go through these and be with him with each thing that he says in our heart in the light of truth and to just listen very deeply in the heart Jesus do I is there any tension when I hear this one sentence that's how subtle the ego is. It can do that on one sentence because it loves to make everything different when the spirit sees everything as the same. So it's like each sentence here is an opportunity to see where is the disturbance that I'm allowing to enter in my holy mind. 
So the first sentence that we can hold in our heart, every thought believed is a delay. Not Jesus, I'm willing to see that every thought believed is delay. And any energy that arises around that thought, I'm willing to put right in the light that I share with my brothers. When you delay looking, you delay the celebration that is always available to you. You deprive yourself your daily bread is given by the Father. Infinite happiness is always yours. This you would delay in time when all is available to you in eternity. <coughs> Pain is an idea that you enjoy and revel in as experience. This is a deep one he's taking us to. Be really being present with what he's saying about pain, that desire and that energetic guilty pleasure that we talked about over the last couple of nights, the guilty pleasure of really saying, oh, I don't want plain, but going down with him to that, oh yeah, that's a guilty pleasure. Really seeing that. I find it so helpful when he does say, it's like, Jesus, do I really have that feeling or desire? And he says, yep. <laughs> okay. So we start from there. Pain is an idea that you enjoy and revel in as experience while claiming you do not know it. That you do not choose it. Jesus, I'm willing to see that I'm denying choosing pain as experience. And any thoughts, feelings, or emotions that I'm having, I'm willing to lay those in the light that's shared with my brothers. And if I'm not aware of this, that what you say here is true, please show me so I can understand this error. And I encourage the beloveds to take as long as you feel you need to have that experience with Jesus. This is the face of innocence, the denial that you do have the power to both create suffering and dispel it from your holy mind. Jesus, if I'm denying my power to create suffering and dispel it 
and that I do have all the power to dispel it for my holy mind. I'm willing to see that. This seeing is the doorway out of suffering. It is very simple. Cease to deny what is already yours, what no pain, suffering, anger, hatred can hide from you, unless you choose it to seem to be so. no future nor past unless you, you choose for it to seem to be so in your experience. Jesus, I'm willing to see the choice for this to be experience. The pain suffering, anger, hatred, or desired experience. Jesus is going really deep here. So you may experience, just keep putting everything that arises in the light of truth. No future nor past. Unless you choose for it to seem to be so in your experience. This is where you learn what you are choosing for. For you can see that you have been choosing against what is most holy and natural to you. Each chosen experience is a choice against holiness, what's natural, which is peace. Father, I lay this in your holy hands to see what's true. This is where you learn what you are choosing for, for you can see that you have been choosing against what is most holy and natural to you, all that is given by the Father, infinite love. This course is really about all or nothing. There is no midpoint at which divine nature and the idea you have created of yourself can meet. I'm willing to see this.
Can the light of divine being that we are, can it see a meeting point with the idea of a personal identity in our direct experience? There is no midpoint at which divine nature and the idea you have created of yourself meet. There is no negotiation as in common in the ways of the world. The ego negotiates, the father does not. Negotiation would mean to hold something back and the father holds nothing back. He's given all to us. He's given all. Negotiation is the idea of win and loss. Heaven cannot negotiate with what never happened. Yet you still have the desire to negotiate, to have heaven and hell meet in the midline. Half of one is still hell. The tiniest compromise is hell. because the Father does not compromise on who you are. So to compromise is to keep one single desire to be other than holy. The tiniest compromise is hell, even though you believe the, the ego that some small Believe the ego that some small part of a personal identity can be preserved and you can still find heaven within that. Jesus, is there any belief below my level of awareness that I can find some piece of heaven within a personal identity? I'm willing to see that. Some piece of heaven within the ego. You believe that some safety and protection lies in hell. <coughs> and thus you would hold yourself and your brother with you in a bin of suffering and despair. Mm -hmm. Compromise is a bin of separate suffering and despair. Do not underestimate the rage that is hidden in this bin of suffering. Even the smallest attempt to hold on to some part of an identity that is never given by the Father. It requires rage to pretend that you and your Father are not one. Jesus, I'm willing to see this. I'm willing to place any rage I might feel in the light that's here with my brother. Any rage I didn't realize I had that I used to withhold infinite love for myself.
You have cast yourself into hell by your desire to have an experience, a dream of pain and suffering. Your father calls you out. I, as in Jesus, call you out. And you are calling yourself out of hell. And the only way, the fastest way, is to look quickly with me, Jesus, as the light in your mind, to let no corner be denied this light. Or you will continue to find hell, secret patches cropping up on a timeline that convince you that only death can be your reward. You are convinced that death is your just reward for denying your father. And I tell you now it is not. You seek vengeance experience for yourself when your father has no idea that such a thing as vengeance exists. Jesus, I'm willing to release any desire for an experience of vengeance into this light. Mm -hmm. Now, someone mentioned to me, uh, and it's been my experience, that this is a very deep and fast dive for those who wish to transcend personal identity. That's the call of the heart Jesus is providing this. And at the same time, he's doing that by pointing directly to the power we have as infinite beings to cease to deny that we are infinite beings. And to accept our power as infinite light is given by the Father. And our brothers, the light bearers, I love that. How valuable and important the brothers are mm -hmm. for seeing the light. It feels helpful just to end in silence and marination and listening to Jesus for anything in our hearts, any messages that he would share. Thank you for joining us, beloveds. Love you. I'm very grateful for you. <clears throat> Amen. Mm-hmm.